High Adventure. Tonight, Ron Evans takes us to America of the 1950s in his gripping story called The Cash at Hogan's Well. Not so darn loud. You disturbing my fishing. Sorry about that. Beth said you were over by the stream. What do you want, Johnny? I just got me two weeks off from the plant, and I got to thinking about what you told us some time ago. About that hoard you stashed away out in the black desert. Yeah, forget it like I done for the last 30 years. Forget more than a thousand ancient Spanish gold coins? Man, you gotta be crazy. I ain't interested, Johnny. I'm getting on now, and I'm all settled down and content. Why should I go out and risk my neck in the desert for a fistful of gold? Uh, there's not much risk these days, Dan. I can borrow a four-wheel drive. That'll get us most of the way in. Look, you've been talking about this cash for 30 years, Dan. Only you and Ezra Ford know where it is. Yeah, Ezra Ford. Before you do anything, you better ask him. Half the cash is his, you know. He won't take kindly to being left out. Does that mean you'll go along with it if Ezra agrees? Maybe, maybe not. Man gets tired of fishing day in and day out. Might be a bit of a change to see the black desert again. That four-wheel drive you mentioned, if it can get us as far as Danger Gully, it won't be too hard to reach Holden's well. That's where we hid the cash. <laughs> I named the well after myself. There's no problem, Dan. We can make it easy. Uh, think about it, Johnny. Well, there's no time. Me and Milton Starkey's laying in the stores already. Oh, he's in it too, huh? Man, you're taking a heck of a lot for granted. Say I don't agree. Oh, we'll go look ourselves. Your name ain't written on that cash, Dan. It's up for grabs. <laughs> You'll never find it in years. Okay, I'll go along if Ezra don't make a fuss. After all, we was partners in them days. It had been in the early 1920s that Dan Hogan and Ezra Ford had found the stout wooden box filled with gold coins in an abandoned Indian hut on the far side of the Black Desert. They'd tried to carry it back with them, but their mules had died in the searing heat. They'd argued. Ezra was in favor of abandoning the gold to save their own lives. But Dan Hogan, he was loath to give it up knowing that it was unlikely he'd ever see it again. That part of the Black Desert was so inaccessible that few men had ever emerged from it alive or sane. Ezra had gone on, and soon even a hard nose like Dan had to face reality. By a stroke of luck, he found a partially buried Indian well with a few drops of life-giving water sparkling in the bottom. There, he buried the box and made it alive to the nearest settlement. So terrible were his privations that he never again entered the Black Desert. Now, 30 years later, he was a poor subsistence farmer, while his ex-partner, Ezra Ford, had prospered and owned a large cosmetics plant. Ezra seemed pleased to see Dan after so many years, and listen patiently while the old man explained. And I've given it a lot of thought, Ezra. Maybe finding the cash will go a long way to easing my old age. Them coins must be worth something like a million bucks by now. What do you say, Ez? Will you join us? Uh, sorry, Dan. I've got too many other things on my mind. This plant doesn't run by itself. <laughs> Besides, one bad experience in the Black Desert is enough for any man in his lifetime. I'm told it's different now. What with them four-wheel drives and all? No, 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 no. I, I think you'd be crazy to try, Dan. Uh, take my advice and forget it. Well, it's okay for you, Ez. You got it made. I got nothing more than a few bare acres of soil to scratch. Mind if I go? You'll get your share, just the same. I, I, I do mind, yes, I do. But but only because I, I don't want to see a man die out there in the boiling wilderness. Well, I want to go, Ez. Oh, very well, it's your choice. You have my blessings and sympathy.
So Johnny's going along with you. And that no good Milton Starkey. Well, Milton's okay. Just born unlucky is all. Well, young Timmy Rollins, he's coming along too. He's a whiz with automobile engines. And it's four days out in the black desert, we can't risk breakdowns. That's four of you. You better make it five. Eh? Yeah? How do you work that out? I'm going along too. Well, you can't. Black Desert's no place for a woman. Now, don't give me that nonsense, Dan Hogan. If I can't go, I see that you don't go neither. Okay, okay, Beth. And just make sure you're all purdied up when we leave at six in the morning. A vehicle worked itself slowly across the rocky and trackless waste of the Black Desert. Three days and not another living creature was seen. They crossed vast tracts of sand and baked mud between high rocky piles and over long, dried-up riverbeds. How Dan Hogan was ever to recognize a landmark after 30 years began to nag at Johnny Wales's mind. As time rolled by, he grew more and more alarmed, until suddenly... There it is, Danger Gully, just like it was last time I seen it. You sure, Dan? Sure, I'm sure. I sure wouldn't like it to be the last time I passed this place. Steer over to the left, Timmy, and the sand's harder. So, from here we're going by foot, eh, Dan? That's right, Milt. But I reckon it's no more than three hours' walk. Hey, Timmy, you park the truck under that shady overhang there. I reckon it's the best we camp there for the night. Why don't we push on? It's after three now. It'll be dark by the time we get there. Better in the morning, huh? Yeah, I guess Dan's right. For the life of me, Dan, I can't figure out why we never came to find this cache years ago. Well, I told you, this desert scares me sick. Even now, with you folks here, it's bad, sinister. What about old Ezra? Was he scared sick as well? Worse than me. Anyhow, he, he, he struck it lucky. Got himself a good job and made some pretty smart investments. Why should he bother risking his neck out here when he's got it made? Huh. Some friend Ezra turned out to be. Never wanted to know you, did he? Wouldn't even help you get a decent job when you needed one. Oh, Ezra was just proud. Didn't want his fine friends to see an old tramp like me hanging around. You over there, Timmy. That's right. This'll do. Beth made a meal over a charcoal brazier. Soon after darkness fell, all were asleep. It was just getting light when... Oh, what's that? What's that? <laughs> a rattler. It was a rattler coming out of Timmy's sleeping bag. Timmy! Oh. Timmy, wake up, Timmy. He's dead. Dead? But how? I, I guess it, I'd say the rattler bit him during the night. Uh, he, he'd have woken up. Look, look, there's the mark of the bite on his thigh. Oh, Timmy, why did it have to be Timmy? He was only a boy. It could have been any one of us, Beth. But just Timmy's lousy luck. They buried the young man under the overhang before setting out across the dark colored rocks towards Hogan's well. After a lot of persuasion, Beth agreed to wait at the truck for the three men to return. The sun was climbing up above the line of hills to the east when they set out. It was already hot, and it grew hotter as they walked and walked. Three hours, you said, Dan. I was guessing. Do you know where we are? Do you, do you know exactly? Uh, not for sure, but, uh, you know, we we got to be on the right track. Uh, we could be lost. No ways. And I could take you back to the truck straight off if I wanted to. Okay, I believe you, because I want to believe you. What does this well of yours look like? You know, just in case I spot it and you don't. Well, it's a shallow, sandy depression like a saucer. There's a there's a low pile of rocks, and under them should be water. Uh, there's a few Indians roam the desert at times. They use it. You never told me that. Say they found the gold. Oh, they'd never find it unless they knew where it was. I hid the box well. Besides, a few Indians that come this way never know gold if you put it in their hands. They're still as primitive as their derned ancestors. Ah! Uh -huh. Now, now I recognize that. You see over there? 
three rocky mounds in a line? Yeah, yeah, well, what about them? Well, I don't know which one, but from the top of one of them, you can see my well. We're almost there, fellas. Oh. Yeah, okay, but we could save time if we knew which one, huh? Well, there are three of us. Now, Milt, you take the one on the left. Johnny, uh -huh. you take the middle, and I'll take the right-hand one. Fire a shot in the air when you see it. Sure. Good thinking, Dan. Let's go. The low hills were about 200 yards apart. Johnny was first up his, and he looked out over an empty expanse of dark sand. Dan saw only a winding dry riverbed and wind-carved reddish boulders. It was from Milton Starkey's hill that the single gunshot came. Johnny and Dan hurried down their own hills and climbed the one on the far left. Johnny was first to reach the summit, and he was still staring downwards when Dan came up alongside of him. Dan stared. They were at Hogan's well. There was no doubt about that. But what really attracted their attention was the antics of Milton. He was lying on the ground by the pile of stones, jerking and groaning as though in a convulsive fit. What's wrong with him, Dan? Search me. We better go and see. Hey, Milton, you gone crazy? Oh, <laughs> Milton, what is it? Look, look, his lips has gone blue. It's, it's like he can't get his breath. He's been poisoned, that's what. I've seen it before. Poisoned? But how? He ain't ate nothing. He's drunk water from the well, see? He shifted the stones. Yeah, but he didn't need water. He's got plenty in his bottle. Well, seems like he tried it out. He's dead. Oh, no. Poor Milt. Always the unlucky one. I don't get it, Dan. Why was the water poisoned? It just don't make sense. Uh, must have been soured up by one of them passing Indians I told you about. One on the run. Must have poisoned the well in case he was being chased. It happened before. But I'm surprised an old hand like Milt getting him caught like that. Oh, no, no. You know, Johnny, I feel like turning my back on all this and going home. This whole darn trip's got a curse on it. Dan, we've had bad luck, poor Timmy getting bitten now, old milk poisoned. But we can't give up now we're here, can we? Well, they wouldn't like us to know they died for nothing, would they? This is the place for sure, huh? Hogan's Well, the same place you talked about all these years. This is it, Johnny. Well, where do you hide the box, then? Under the stones? Take it easy, Johnny. First we bury milk, then we get the box, okay? Yeah, I guess that's the decent thing to do. Twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Okay. Should be somewhere under here, about three feet down. Great. The ground's soft. Seems funny to think we're standing over a million bucks worth of gold coins. Coins that have been lying here for the years. That place you first found when you was with Ezra. How do you reckon they came to be there? Well, I don't know. This place used to be Spanish years ago. Say a couple hundred or so. I reckon the local Indians must have robbed a trader and didn't know the value of what they stole. Then when they abandoned their hut, they left it lying there because it was so darn heavy. Must be something like a 130-pound weight, you know. Dan, I hit something. Hey? Yeah, look. Wooden brass. Oh, that's my box, all right. Hey, there's a handle on your side. Help me pull it up. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Okay. I can open it. Oh, no. Full of nothing but sand. Dan, you said... It was full of gold coins, I swear it, Johnny. Somebody's been here before us. Yeah, but who? How would they know where to look? It's crazy, Dan. Two dead people for a box of sand. Ezra. Ezra? Ezra, for damn it. That explains how he suddenly got rich. He came back and took the coins for himself. The thieving, no-good skunk. But how'd he know where to look? You said yourself he'd gone on ahead. That's what I thought. He must have hung back and watched me struggle along with the bucks. He saw where I buried it. Now I come to think of it, it was Ezra who scared me off trying to come back for it when he saw me later in Grahamsville. The skunk, the dirty, thieving rattlesnake. He got that gold out years ago, never said a word. We was partner, Ezra and me. And yet he knew how I had a battle to scratch a living. 
and didn't offer me so much as a dollar to get drunk on. Ha! Some partner. So it's all been for nothing. I'm glad I came back, because now I know the truth. And Ezra's going to pay dear for this double cross. Hey, now, don't do nothing stupid. I won't, but remember, this trip's cost two lives, and Ezra Ford's going to know all about it. It was after dark when they finally arrived back to where Beth awaited them. She was distressed by Milton's death, but less so by the missing gold coins. Early next morning, the surviving trio wearily set out on their return journey. The first day passed uneventfully, but around noon on the second, misfortune again struck. The contour of the country had changed to one of deep gorges and sandstone pinnacles, sagebrush and cacti. The road, if it could be called that, wound like a serpent through this treacherous, waterless land along valley floors and winding high up the hills on narrow ledges. They were traveling on one such ledge. Here, Beth, let me drive. I'm okay, I tell you. You've been driving all night, turned about with Johnny. Maybe, but I saw your head nod just oh, then. stop fussing, will you? Look out, Beth. Watch the ledge. What's up with you guys? I'm doing okay. Beth, the edge. You've lost the gear. We're slipping back. I can't control it. Beth! The brake! Hold it, Beth! Ah! Luckily, or perhaps unluckily, as it turned out, it was not a steep, long fall. The truck rolled twice and pulled up with a jarring crash when it hit a boulder. Johnny and Dan climbed out, shaken but otherwise unscathed. For Beth, it was different. The steering wheel had broken, and a column had pierced her chest, killing her almost instantly. Dan was hysterical with grief. And it was this third death which finally unhinged him. For two hours, he raved, threw down every curse he knew on Ezra Ford's head. Johnny Wales worked hard at trying to calm him down. And when he did succeed, Dan fell into a fit of icy cold depression. Here, Danny. Take this mug of coffee. I don't want nothing. It can only do you good, man. Life's still got to go on, you know. Not for Ezra Ford. He was a dead man the minute Beth died. He's as good as killed her. You can't directly blame Ezra. He didn't ask you to go looking for the gold. Even if the gold had still been there, the same terrible things might have happened. You got to look at it like that. If he'd been an honest man and told me he'd taken the gold, do you think we'd have come into this godforsaken desert? Well, that's true, I guess. Well, I'm going deeper. It was your hassling that got me into making this trip in the first place. Yeah, well, I, I thought we'd get at it quite easy. I wasn't to know what was going to happen any more than you. But they did happen, Johnny. Beth was killed, Milt was killed, young Timmy was killed. And if you and your big mouth hadn't talked me into going, they'd all be alive and kicking right now. But we're all going to die soon. Yeah, you too, Johnny. What do you mean, Dan? You, because you started all this. And Ezra, because he could have stopped it if he'd been an honest man. My Beth's dead, Johnny. I can hear her calling for blood. Point that rifle away, Danny. Beth drove herself off the ledge. You can't blame me for that. You heard me warning her. That stupid woman just kept on... Ah! No man calls my Beth a stupid woman. Especially now she's passed on... It took Dan Hogan three days to walk out of that desert. Without reporting in to the county sheriff, he went straight to his small holding and got cleaned up. He put on his Sunday church suit and drove his beat-up old station wagon into town. After some wrangling with Ezra Ford's secretary, he was finally shown into his ex-partner's luxurious office suite. Uh, uh, 
Take a take a seat, Dan. You look worn out. <clears throat> you, uh, you gave up the trip halfway, huh? I reached Hogan's well, Ezra. Took only three and a half days. Not like it used to be. Uh, I see. Uh, you uh, you found it? Uh, the coins, I mean? Sure, I found the empty box, just like you left it. Same place as I hid it. it, it, it empty, you say? Don't put on an innocent routine, Ezra. You looted that box a long time ago, almost what? 30 years ago. What are you talking about? I wouldn't go back into the black desert for a million dollars. You did. The box was empty. Yeah. You hung about and saw where I buried it. Dan, and back you got in it. town, you talked me out of ever going back to get it. Meanwhile, you, you... went and got it all Dan, for you yourself. Dan, you can't talk oh, to me like no. that. Oh, no. You can cool the indignation. Nobody else could have dug it up without knowing exactly where I buried That's... it. Only you could have known Renegade Indians pass that way, don't forget. An Indian wouldn't have bothered filling the box with sand and burying it again. It's more the kind of thing you'd do, oh, as. nonsense, But look, friends. I'm past being angry with your cheating. I've got even more to be angry about. If you told me the truth, then the tragedies wouldn't happen the way they did. Tragedies? On the trip back, Beth got killed when the truck rolled. Beth, I... I, I, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, she was a good woman. And young Timmy Rawlins got bitten by a rattler and died. Milton Starkey drank poison water at the well and died in terrible agony. It was all you're doing, Ed. Why, you can't say that, Danny. You it's... and Johnny both. I killed Johnny just after Beth got killed. You're next. Danny, have you gone crazy? Do you know what you're saying? I sure do. Johnny said something like that just before I blew his head off. Yeah. Take a good look at the gun, Ezra. It's pointing right at your rotten listen, guts. Listen, Dan, listen. Let's try and talk rationally about this. Okay, I'll admit I went back and took the Spanish coins. I didn't declare them and sold them one by one over the next few years to under-the-counter dealers. It was my grub stick to this business. You're some polecat, Ez. And you wouldn't even offer me a job cleaning out the toilets. Oh, look, Dan, for pity's sake, won't you see reason? Sure is. I got plenty of reason. Reason to kill you. Oh, oh. <coughs> oh, Mr. Forrest. Stay where you are, lady. He's dead. And you'd better listen to what I'm going to say. Hello? Is that Sheriff Baxter? Sure, this is Dan Hogan. I want you to come over to Ezra Ford's plant. Yeah, I just killed him. We was partners, you know, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, I'll be waiting for you. Soon afterwards, Dan Hogan explained all to the county sheriff and went meekly along with him to the lockup. Fifteen days later, he died in his sleep. Was it of a broken heart for Beth? Who knows? It all happened over 20 years ago. But this I do know. The hot wind blows and the sun sears with fire those dark sands of the black desert. The stone pile of Hogan's well still stands out there in the evil wilderness, but no man has passed that way since. Except, maybe, for the odd Indian renegade who doesn't know the story of Hogan's well. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.